open up to John. <laughs> Big John, the Gospel of John. Big good John. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to really wing it tonight. I, uh, <clears throat> I really like this morning's message. I like both of them, the 8.30 and the 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Like uh, Max and I were talking just right before the service. And I thought, wasn't that a masterful job of Dave uh, surmising, you know, or com- uh, bringing a summary to, uh, of all that's happened here in the last while? And boy, it sure seems like we're right on the precipice of, of something I'm going like Max was saying, I'm glad to be here at this season and <clears throat> looking forward to it. Empty chairs or not, hallelujah, <laughs> here we go. You know, and, I'm, and then it's the 8.30 message, you know, about uh, Thanksgiving and how it can really affect even change on the monec- molecular, not molecular. <laughs> and we can't edit these videos yet, so hey, what, what happens is what happens, but, you know, what happens on the... The molecular level, I, that, that's really what's been rolling in me all afternoon. So that's why uh, this afternoon, I haven't had a moment from the time that we had lunch until now. I was on the phone right up till I left <coughs> various ministry needs. So there's been absolutely no study time. So we're going to go to John and, and look at why Thanksgiving, uh, or even more specific, let's talk about words, the words of your mouth why it would have an effect in the material realm, okay? Why, how, and uh, I know people want me to teach on quantum mechanics, and listen, I had, I had enough, just enough quantum mechanics to be dangerous, <laughs> and I've read a little bit, you know, I've read a little bit, but anyway, I, let's stay with the Word for now, okay? We'll get into that later. Let's stay with the Word right now. <clears throat> to me, the Gospel of John is the New Testament Genesis, because if you go back to the book of Genesis, it starts off how? In the beginning. And here it starts off how? In the beginning. You know, And this gives us some insight behind the scenes of creation and, and how it all really came to pass. So it says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And uh, the Greek scholars tell us in the Greek language, there's actually an emphasis there, like, no, not one single thing. So let's stop right there for a moment. All things were made by him. Him who? Him, God, more specific in this passage, Him, the Word. All, let's read it again. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So who's the subject or what is the subject? It's the Word. All things were made by Him. With The Word. Without the Word was not anything made that was made. No, not one single thing. Well, let's think about that for a minute. Everything that is, everything, I don't care what it is, at its core, see, we like to think of building blocks, you know, like, okay, well, this chair, this podium here, it's made out of plastic, and so plastic comes from oil, and you can start breaking down the molecular structure of oil, and then we go down to atoms, and then in my day, they had it broken down to electrons and neutrons and protons and then right near the time I was graduating they were getting into things like quarks quarks and and quantum quantum physics and I learned just enough to know that the Newtonian physics only applies till you get down to the quantum level below the quantum level it looks like chaos Newtonian principles don't apply and which is really at first I thought was scary in a way because you know normally the the lower you go the more of a base you're coming to the foundational principles you know so seeing everything force equals mass times acceleration uh, 
uh, there for every for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newtonian physics. You would think that as you got the the building blocks smaller and smaller, it would become even more Newtonian. But what's what's crazy? <laughs> it gets non-Newtonian, and it gets things can actually exist in two places at the same time. And if you get it down low enough, if you observe it, you change it. <laughs> so at first it kind of scared me. And then I thought, well, where did I think miracles came from? See, the universe that created, that's probably not the right way, not the universe, the realm where he lives, <laughs> the word, the God, the Father, that realm that created this realm, we could say the realm of the spirit, Maybe say it that way. That realm, I've said it for years, the physics of that realm are different than the physics of this realm. Now they're even discovering it as they go down to the elemental building blocks, they find out. Well, sure enough, the things that happen on our level where we live, they did not originate that way. So we see miracles happen, like Jesus walking on the water. How many have tried that? No, I mean, no, no show of hands, you know. But I've read about people that tried it. And Dave talks about that friend of his that tried it. Can you imagine being all dressed up in your suit and ready to go preach? And you come out the motel door, and there's a swimming pool. And you've been building yourself up. You know, you're ready to go preach. And you go, I'm going to take it on. <laughs> I'm going to walk right across that water. And then you've got to call them, and there'll be a short delay. <laughs> Well, <laughs> when it says here, everything that exists, though, this part I can get. Everything. There is not anything that at its core did not come from, let's say it another way, its essence is the Word of God. Everything. Look at it again. Isn't that what it says? All things were made by Him. Made by the word, and without him, the word, was not anything made that was made. You go back and read the Genesis account. Everything that happens there, and God said, well, that's the word. God said, that's the word. The Holy Spirit takes somehow that spoken word. I don't know how he does it, but when he's through with it, stuff appears. <laughs> Things exist. But the substance, if you broke it down far enough, wouldn't be quarks, electrons, protons, whatever. It wouldn't be that. It would be the baseline is what? It's the Word of God. And then one day it hit me. Well, no wonder. Sickness, disease, blind eyes, um, water. No wonder it will respond to the Word of God because at its core it is the Word of God. <laughs> oh my God. It is. It is the Word of God. When Dave does like he did for a little while this morning, now today he was using the example of he can't forsake you. Why? Why can't he forsake you? Because for a short time, he had to forsake him. Jesus did not deserve to be forsaken. But the Father had to, had to forsake him. But because he did, that means no matter how bad it is, he cannot forsake you. And then Dave goes on, and I'm glad he does. I, I start getting, it starts finally getting to me. No, he he cannot. He can't. Under any circumstance, he cannot forsake you. And it starts happening. Something starts happening to me. Yeah. Especially if you've really been going through it. And, and the devil's telling you that you've forsaken. And I don't know about you. He's always got big lists of reasons why I should be forsaken. Okay, I've, I've got a witness back here. I'm not the only one he does that with. 
okay? But now sometimes Dave does it on this, this wise. And with t tonight and this morning's message, it's more, he cannot lie. He says we have trouble relating to a God that can li cannot lie because we all know we can. We try not to. But that is not the same as having no ability to. He says, no, you don't, you don't understand. He, he cannot lie. He, he, and Dave will go on, you know, I can't do it as good as he does. But no, he can't. No, he cannot lie. When you think about his word, his word is truth. Isn't that what Jesus said? Father, thy word is truth. Truth, by definition, is the polar opposite of a lie. Now, how you couple that up with this morning, these men that came back to give thanks, or let's get more general tonight, when you decide you're going to take God's word as your final answer. I'm thinking again about those lepers, which we read. Don't turn there tonight, but Luke 17, 12 through 19, there was 10 lepers. And they came to Jesus, and they were asking for mercy. And they were doing uh, like they're supposed to. They were standing afar off, which that's what they're supposed to do under the Old Covenant. And they were saying, Jesus, it says they lifted up their voices, and they said, they called his name, Jesus, Master have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. I've thought about that, meditated that passage for decades. It's going, they didn't have any evidence. Instead of saying, he said, Go show yourself to the priest. See, you're still in Big John? <laughs> See, the same word, the same word that everything consists of, the same word was made flesh. The word of God, look at it. If I can find it, we'll look at it. <laughs> it's true, he was in the world, he came into his own. Thank you very much. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This, it's the miracle of miracles. He is the second, I mean, you know, I can only go so far here with my, my brain leaking out my left ear. But God the Son, who has always existed, the word of God by whom everything was spoken, God the Father conceived it. The way I understand the Bible. God the Father conceived it. He wanted light and everything else. The Word, the second member of the Godhead, He spoke it. God said. And then the Holy Spirit, He was already brooding here. He is the molecule changer. And He manifested whatever was spoken by the Word. But this same Word, the second member of the Godhead, put on flesh. So when we look at Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we are seeing the Word of God with legs. <laughs> it's, like, it's almost like God, through all the prophets of the Old Testament and all the things we see through the Old Testament, they were all saying, this is what God is like. And, or God would speak through the prophets, and he would say, this is what I am, what I am like. But they still weren't getting it. So God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us not to tell us what God is like but to show us to demonstrate the word where we can watch him and we say oh no wonder he said I and my father are one well the father God and his word are one why he cannot lie it's one of his attributes now see you can get your healing if you ever get this we can have our revival. We can have any miracle you need. I mean, my friend Jamie is sitting here tonight with blind, he was in the line today. We prayed. I know everybody here that knows Jamie and loves Jamie. We've all prayed with all the faith we know how. 
Yet as of this moment, her, her, uh, eye, her seeing has not manifested. But that's not ever going to change the word of God, is it, Jane? And we know that we know that the word of God will manifest sight in her. So what do we do? You know, you, you, we keep pressing on. Whatever is in us that's preventing that, we're going to press on until it's not preventing it anymore. But you can't do away with the word. God cannot lie. So these ten men, these lepers, they came to the word. Instead of saying they came to Jesus, they came to the word of God. And the word says, the, the desire was to be healed. And the word says, go show yourself to the priest. You can't do that under the old covenant unless you're healed. But the, what does the word say? You're healed. Go show yourself to the priest. Boy, I've been over that and over that. I'm going, now they had no evidence. Does this remind you of anything? They had no evidence that they were healed except God's word. <laughs> Does that don't remind you guys of anything? Y'all remember when I was going through, when I was smoking and all the, every time I'd try and quit, did you have evidence? Oh God, my flesh made me feel like I was under a 10 ton building, you know. And every time I'd try and quit, you know, and you can apply this to any addiction that you'd like. Thank you very much. Doesn't matter what it is. Every time I try and quit, this, my every, with every symptom, every circumstance, was, I had lots of evidence that I was not free. But Romans 6 pounds it into you over and over again. You are free. And I remember that day I got so frustrated. I was, I was going through my Romans 6 confessions again. And I got just puffing away, just smoking away. I said, God... Your word says I'm free here, Roman. Do you understand? I have no evidence that I'm free except your word. I knew it as soon as I said it. I already knew I was in trouble. I heard it as clear as you're hearing my voice now. And that's all the evidence you need. Well, a few years later, it was manifested. Been free now, for a, been free in the natural for a long time. But the truth, the unchanging truth is... I was free from the day I was born again. Hmm. Hmm. I like me just chew on that for that was good. That tastes good in my mouth. I was free from the day I was born again. Jamie was healed from the day he took those stripes. Pick your what is it? What miracle do you need? See, and this is where the word cannot lie. Cannot lie. He can't change. The good, the good part about that equation is we can. And that's where I thank God for this message. I remember I was here at the, the conference. And it was a good conference. This was a long time ago, quite a few years ago. And a lady had brought her baby. How many were here? That sweet little baby, and its head was swollen, and it had big knots, and it was a cancer thing. And the doctors had pretty well just, there's nothing we can do right over here in this area right here. And I mean, we prayed this whole church. We had like 400 people, and all the ministers, and all the lay people, and all of us together praying. And all of us put together, the baby died. The real faith builder this week on <laughs> people watching the video. <laughs> Well, listen, you're going to have to learn what you're made of. What do you do in the face of something like that? You're just going to throw the Bible away now like so many of them have? Say, well, it's just not true and start making up false doctrine like it's just not his will to heal everybody? That's not true. How do you know it's not true, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? If that's true and the word was manifested, manifested to show us what God is really like, then somewhere, sometime, in all of those healing lines, all of those multitudes that he healed, surely one time we'd have record, yes, I'll heal you, yes, you're healed, yes, you're, oh, oh, wait a minute. It's just not his will to heal you. You know there's nothing like that in there, see. So what do you do when you face, I remember, and boy, it was hard, hard, hard on that mother. We felt, so, you know, we felt, I felt like a sheep-eating dog, you know. Well, you're either going to react, you're going to react one of two ways after something like that. You're going to give up and run off, or you're going to press in even harder than before. 
Well, we've been pressing in. I'm going to be 65 next month, and I am not burning out. I am burning in. I am more determined now than I was the day I started here. We will have our revival. I, I'm excited to be here. I really am. The Word was made flesh. If you want to see the Word of God, if you want to see God, <laughs> Jesus said it. He, he said it. Philip, have I been with you so long? Wasn't it Philip? I've been, have I been with you this long? And you don't yet know who I am? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Well, I don't see Jesus going around putting blindness on anybody. I, I don't see him putting cancer on anybody. I don't see him wrecking anybody's business to teach him a lesson. I don't see him doing any of that. All I ever see is the Master blessing, healing, forgiving, loving, working miracles. Everything that we desire. Everything that we want. That song, you're all I need. Amen. Because everything you need is in him. But now him is his word. His word and him are one. I heard that kind of teaching for years where it finally started dawning on me. I can get from the word anything I see that anybody else got from the word. Got real quiet right there. Remember that, that uh, I did a service called Intercession by Faith. I believe it's 2010, might be 2009. If you did not hear that message, you missed half your life. Intercession by Faith. I've never heard, heard it exactly taught that way by anybody. But he had me go through all of these cases, one of them being the centurion, who came because his servant was sick. You remember that? And it's conspicuously absent. You know, we have all of these reasons why people did not get healed. Well, maybe, that, maybe the servant was in unforgiveness. Maybe the servant wasn't a believer. Maybe the servant said a cross word that day. Maybe the servant had, a, had an ingrown toenail and it made him harsh with everybody. I don't know. Pick your reason. But it is conspicuously absent. We don't know anything about that servant. Except the centurion came to the word. He came to the word to get healing for his servant. And I think on purpose God made it absent. To let us know. We can, if that man can come and get healing for his servant. We can come and we can get healing for our friends. How do you come? You come to the word. You find the word of God that covers your case. I mean this... This is kind of like faith 101 in a way. But the word. Re, <laughs> hundreds of messages are running through my mind. Things like. Things like. Uh, we could go to Psalms 103. Talk about the angels. Y'all want to go there? Uh, let's go there anyway. I think it's 103. I hope it is. If it's not. I'll quote it best I can. Yeah. Psalm 103. How would you guys like to have before nightfall? Oh, it's too late for nightfall. Before midnight. <laughs> it's dark here. <laughs> to have angels working on behalf of your circumstances. You know, angels. You read about angels? One angel in the Old Testament slew 180 some odd thousand of the enemy in a single night. I mean, they're pretty good. You get an angel or a few angels working on your case, your circumstances are going to change. Well, I've heard all this stuff over the years about angels. How do you get angels working? You know, I mean, they don't just sit there and do nothing. They tell you, you know, they're, they hit their servants to be doing kingdom business. Well, look at verse 20. <laughs> Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Now this is the way I read it for years. Hearkening unto his word. Is that what your Bible says? And I'd read it and I'd just go past it. And I'd read it and I'd just go past it. And then one day I saw it. Hearkening unto the voice of your word. And instantly my mind thought of my grandmother's both sides. Both of them. Both of my grandmothers, the Southern Baptist side and the Holiness Pentecostal side. 
Both sides had those giant Bibles on the coffee table. You know, the one that's got all the family record in it, got all the pretty pictures. You know, it's about four or five inches thick. You know, little kid has to take both hands to open the cover, you know. They had that Bible on that, on that coffee table. There is the Word of God. Now, everyone that brought your Bible, pick it up. Put it right up next. <laughs> Look at this. I've got iPhone Bibles now. So. <laughs> it's still the Word of God. Glory to God. <laughs> I don't know. There's my talk. It may, it may ruin my illustration. <laughs> but I go, now put it up to your ear. Listen. Do you hear any voice? You hear any voice? And it dawned on me. I'm going, oh my God. How you activate angels. You know, a lot of people like to direct angels and command them to do this and command them to do that. And I'm not, I'm not much on that. But I know what this verse says. If I want to get angels working on my behalf, I have to start giving voice to God's word. They, they hearken to the voice of his word. You start putting, you find his word, this God who cannot lie, I don't, mind, I don't care if it's financial circumstances, marriage circumstance. You know Sue in the very beginning. You guys just don't know. See, if you really want to know faith, you need to have Sue up here. Because the man talking to you is not the man she started with. I, I was such a mess. All I really knew, I mean, I, loved, I got born again. Michael got us born again. But all I knew was legalism. And boy, all that came to the front real quick. I showed her the love of God after about two weeks. She wouldn't go to church with me, and I threw my Bible at her. I said, yeah. <laughs> now, that's just, that's just a tiny fraction, okay? And, and, uh, but she got a hold, uh, largely because of, because of Michael's teachings, about the confession of God's Word. And she got a hold of it real quick concerning me. And so I was a mess. I mean, I was just, a, a, you know, I'm trying to, anyway, I don't want to go, we take hours. You know, and women, a lot of times, you know, they'd get together and, and they just normally, they'd, they'd talk, you know, you got to talk to somebody. And before long, a lot of times conversations would be, well, my husband this and my husband that. Yeah, I know what you mean. My husband is like that too. And, you know, Sue would be, cons you know, of course I wasn't there. I found all this out later. She would be conspicuously silent because she got a hold early on of the power of God's word to change me. She went through his word and she found certain confessions. I didn't know she was doing it for years. I probably would have gotten mad if I found out in the early days, you know. But she got a hold of it early on. And she started confessing those scriptures over me to the point that started becoming real in her before there was ever much change in me. So these women be having their uh, talk, <laughs> you know. And I'm not preaching this at anybody now. <laughs> These women would be having their talk. And, and, you know, Sue wouldn't say it. And finally, if they said, well, Sue, now what about you? You don't ever say anything much. And she'd say, well, I, all I can tell you is nothing unprincely ever comes out of my husband's mouth. My husband is a righteous man of God. He's a good provider. He loves God and he loves me. He takes care of the family. She would just go on as long as they'd listen. You know, she'd start quoting... Uh, you want to really die, just quote the love chapter out of the Amplified Bible over you, you know. Takes no account of a suffered wrong. <laughs> yeah, we're all right there. <laughs> but it started, she says, she, she watched me change. It had a lot to do with her speaking God's word. It looses angels on our behalf. And I don't know what all it looses the Holy Spirit to do. I know the Holy Spirit sure hearkens to the voice of God's word. Later on, when I started seeing that more myself, we printed out the love chapter from the Amplified Bible. This is at my website, by the way, if you want to, on the very home page near the bottom. It's called Tapping Into God's Power. And we have the form already there for you. You can just print it out. We just printed out the Amplified version of 1 Corinthians 13, where I could write her name in it, and she could write my name in it. And we just quoted the love chapter over each other. We did it for years, and it had an effect on us. See, at our core, even we are the Word of God. Especially if you're born again, that spirit, spawned of God on the inside of you, man, 
you will respond to the word of God. You will. You cannot speak the word of God over yourself and stay the same. You cannot. Now, it may take a while to convince you. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I mean, I, I can't tell you the hours that I walked out in that field smoking, confessing the Romans 6 over myself, hours. And, but I know every time I did it, it was like another drop of faith in the bucket, another drop of faith in the bucket. Well, one day that bucket overflowed. You know, it's same thing with your healing, same thing with your finances, same thing with your spouse. God's word has been given to us from this God who cannot lie. We can approach the word the same way again that that centurion approached the word. How about the woman who wasn't even a, a Jew, the Samaritan woman who had it? Wasn't she a Samaritan woman or, or a Canaanite woman? Yeah, a Canaanite woman. And her daughter was possessed with a devil. Well, she came to receive healing for her daughter. And at that moment, the Canaanites had no covenant with God. She would not settle for that, though. And she says, look, even the dogs eat the crumbs. What she was really saying, the way I understand that, she says, I know God's bigger even than this covenant. He's got, he's got an answer for me, even if I am a Canaanite. Boy, Jesus liked that. He said, whoa, <laughs> woman. Your faith has made your daughter whole, you know. And she came to the word of God. And, we are, and the daughter, I don't know, it just says she was grievously vexed of a devil. What does that mean? Was she a drug addict? I don't know what it meant. But I do know this. We are, the information is conspicuously absent concerning her. We don't know if she was a nice daughter, bad daughter. Loving daughter, jealous daughter, hateful daughter, rebellious daughter. We don't know anything about that. Oh, and I think we don't know it on purpose. Because we don't have to know it. Because we can, if, if, if they're in there for our example, we can come to the word. And if we will not quit, you can get healing for your family. If she could get healing for her daughter and she didn't even have a covenant with God and we are the sons and daughters of God, come on. We're living so far below what the Word has for us. It's amazing. Well, go back to Big John again just for a minute. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. With, nothing was made without Him. I know I've got John. I had John in here a while ago. Hang on. It's Big John. I'll be able to find it. Oh. Yes, sir. Go to First John. Now we're going to Little John. Yes, sir. I forgot. He told me that before the service. First John. <laughs> See, and this is another beginning. This is why. Genesis in the beginning. John in the beginning. First John, that which was from the beginning. <laughs> I love John. <laughs> that which was from the beginning. Well, what was from the beginning? The Word. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, God, of the Word of life. For the life was manifested... I hope I'm going to say this, this, let me say this a little differently. See, I would like to see, you know, we keep talking about this new nature that we have, and it is a new nature, and we're, you received it when you got born again. Part of me goes, boy, I would sure, man, we keep talking about maturity and that growing up, you know. Man, I would like to see what would, what would it be like if that nature ever came to full maturity on the inside of me. That's what he's saying. He said, I've seen it at full maturity. I have handled it. I have touched it. I've listened to it, that life. It's because the life that's in you is no, the life itself is no different. It's the same life that resurrected him. Now you have your own personality, but that life, we're all connected with, to God by that one spirit, that same life. He says, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life for the life. You could put it right in there. The new nature was manifested. You could put full harvest. We have seen it. 
and bear witness. In other words, I'm not guessing about this. <laughs> I have seen this life. I have touched him. I've sat down and broke bread with this life. I, I've seen it. And show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That is, later on he says, as he is, so are we in this world. That's the full, no wonder Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater than these shall you do. You talk about everything responding to the word of God because it is the word of God. You are the word of God in the sense of that's that same life that's on the inside of us. Now we have it like a seed, you know. He says, uh, for the kingdom of God is like a seed which a man planted. And he, he'd water it and he'd go sleep and he'd come back and he'd go sleep and he'd come back. And the plant grew up, bore fruit. And he didn't know how. But he said, first the blade, then the ear. But see, eventually, the full corn in the ear. Jesus calls himself the seed. He is the seed that was planted in the ground to die. Every seed I have ever seen that's planted, they always grow, they grow up and they produce multiple seeds. And every seed able to, read, able to produce exactly what the original one did. That's God's plan for Christianity. It's been hidden away for years. Religion has done everything that it can to make you think you're just that same old sinner. There's no hope for you except just hope for mercy. You just hope God throws you a crumb once in a while, you slimy dog worm. <laughs> it is so the opposite of what this Bible teaches. That life that was manifested to John, that life that he handled, that life that he was... I wonder what John thought later. Well, we can find out what John thought later. Because he's going, in this very letter, he's going, that life that I saw and handled, that life is now in me? <laughs> we try and wrap our brains around that. But we didn't touch and handle the way John did. I read this and I... I, these kind of meditations go through my mind. I'm going, man, they watched him. They saw the life. He says right here, I'm a witness. The life was manifested. I saw it. I touched it. And then later in this, chap, later in this book, this letter, he's telling you that life that I saw and handled and touched, now it's in me. And if you're born again, you little children, that life is in you. The devil's in for real trouble. We really start getting this. <laughs> where it becomes, where the, can I say it again? Where the word once more becomes flesh. Where that life that he touched and handled and was manifest, when that life comes to maturity in us, you think it's going to be any less? Do you think that word has lost any of its power? Lost any of its dominion? That word, everything that you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, except this time it's not going to be just one. This time it's going to be thousands, if not millions, all around the world. I still say the greatest harvest for the kingdom of God is in front of us, not behind us. The greatest harvest for the kingdom of God is yet to come. I sign all my letters, everything that I do, the best is yet to come. And that's part of why. We are headed towards the biggest revival that the world has ever seen. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on with all... When, that, when everything else is gone, hang on with your earlobe, but hang on. <laughs> the best is yet to come. 